on World News Tonight. Historic rate hike. Can the Fed hit the brakes for a 40-year high inflation without triggering recession? Find out tonight. Climate crisis. Global warming affects Europe as nations brace for intense early heat waves. Monkeypox fears. WHO warns that monkeypox is gaining foothold in Europe and more nations secure vaccines. And it's a panda party. Giant furry friends have a blast as they celebrate their birthdays with many other friends. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Suzanne Chanelli. Good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. Now, U.S. President Joe Biden announced a new package of arms and ammunition for Ukraine after reaffirming Washington's support for Kyiv against Russia's invasion in a call with President Vladimir Zelensky. The $1 billion package includes more artillery, coastal anti-ship defense systems and ammunition for artillery and advanced rocket systems. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is at a pivotal moment, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Wednesday, adding the United States and its allies could not lose focus on the three-month-long conflict as the U.S. pledged one billion more in weapons to Kiev. We must continue to rise to meet this challenge. Ukraine's soldiers and citizens are doing just that, and they are defending their homeland with resolve, grit, and ingenuity. And they've inspired us all, and they need our help. Austin spoke in Brussels at a meeting of dozens of defense ministers working to coordinate aid to Ukraine, where several countries pledged more military assistance. The White House announced around a billion dollars worth of new weapons for Ukraine on Wednesday, including coastal defense systems and ammunition for artillery and advanced rocket systems. It includes guided MLRS munitions, 18 more M777 howitzers and the tactical vehicles to tow them and 36,000 rounds of 155 millimeter ammunition. Russia on Wednesday accused Western countries of fighting a proxy war with Russia, saying the blood of Ukrainian civilians was on the hands of Western countries supplying weapons. Ukraine is pressing the United States and other allies for speedy deliveries of weapons as it fights Russian forces in the eastern Donbas region. The battle for the eastern industrial city of Severodonetsk is now the biggest fight in Ukraine as the conflict has shifted into a punishing war of attrition. Chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley told reporters that about three-quarters of Severodonetsk was under Russian control, but Ukrainians were fighting fiercely for the city. The numbers clearly favor the Russians. Uh, in terms of artillery, they do outnumber, they outgun and outrange. You've heard that many, many times. Um, and they do have enough forces, but there's, the Russians have run into a lot of problems. They've got command and control issues, logistics issues, they've got morale issues, leadership issues, and a wide variety of other issues. So the Ukrainians are fighting a heroic fight. Kiev has said it was losing 100 to 200 soldiers each day, with hundreds more wounded. In an overnight address, President Volodymyr Zelensky described the battle for the Donbas industrial heartland as one of the most brutal in European history. In the meantime, Chinese President Xi Jinping has reaffirmed support for Moscow in a telephone conversation with his Russian counterpart. Regarding the U Ukraine war, President Xi said a proper settlement needs to be reached. The leaders of China and Russia held a phone conversation Wednesday afternoon to renew show of support for each other's core interests. According to China's foreign ministry, President Xi Jinping told his Russian counterpart that Beijing stands ready to promote stable and long-term development of pragmatic cooperation with Moscow. He further highlighted the importance of deepening strategic coordination between the two countries. Regarding Ukraine, she said that all related parties should seek a proper resolution in a responsible manner. In return, Russian President Vladimir Putin supported Beijing's opposition to interference in domestic affairs, including in Xinjiang, Hong Kong and Taiwan. In their second publicized call since Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, the two leaders also discussed a range of security issues, including a bolstering of military cooperation. The news comes as Washington vowed additional military and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. 
President Joe Biden told his Ukrainian counterpart that his country plans to send another $225 million in humanitarian aid. This follows pleas from President Volodymyr Zelensky for more long-range missiles as fighting remains fierce in the eastern part of the country. French President Emmanuel Macron said that Moldova's bid to join the European Union was perfectly legitimate, speaking at a joint news conference with Moldova President Maya Sandu. Criticized for keeping an open line to Russia's president, Emmanuel Macron said talks were the only way to end the war in Ukraine. At a given point in time, when we will have supported the resistance as much as possible, when Ukraine will have won and the fighting can stop, we must negotiate. Speaking alongside his Romanian counterpart, the French president said Europe would support Ukraine until its victory over Russia. Macron's trip is a symbolic show of support for Europe's eastern flank. It was a chance for him to visit the roughly 500 French troops stationed at a NATO military base, where France has also deployed a surface-to-air missile system. After Romania, Macron went to Moldova, which has been dealing with an influx of refugees since the war began back in February. Worried that the ex-Soviet state may be in the Kremlin's crosshairs, Moldova's president has urged EU states to grant it membership status. But the French president said he couldn't speak for all of the bloc's members. I don't want to preempt their decision. My role as head of the EU's rotating presidency is to build a consensus. My wish, however, is to send a clear and positive message to this request. France already provides financial support to Moldova. Some 400,000 Ukrainian refugees have entered Moldova, and while many have gone on to neighboring countries, around 80,000 have decided to stay. But the big unknown surrounding Macron's trip is whether he'll go to Ukraine. Macron is one of the few EU leaders yet to set foot in Ukraine since the outbreak of the war. For the first time in almost 30 years, the Fed hiked rates by 75 basis points, citing the need to try and tame inflation in the United States, which is currently running at 40-year highs. Fed Chair Jerome Powell also revealed that further potential equally big, if not bigger, hikes are almost certain in the months to come. We're strongly committed to bringing inflation back down, and we're moving expeditiously to do so. The Federal Reserve raised its target interest rate by three-quarters of a percentage point on Wednesday, the biggest rate hike since 1994, as it scrambles to stem a disruptive surge in inflation, which has proven much more difficult to tame than expected. American families. Fed Chair Jerome Powell said policymakers came to the view that they needed to act more aggressively and indicated a faster path of rate hikes to come. Clearly, today's 75 basis point increase is an unusually large one, and I do not expect moves of this size to be common. From the perspective of today, either a 50 basis point or a 75 basis point increase seems most likely at our next meeting. We will, however, make our decisions meeting by meeting and will continue to, to communicate our thinking as clearly as we can. But with a tightening of monetary policy came an acknowledgement that the economy will slow as a result. The Fed warning that the pace of growth will moderate with unemployment likely to rise. I think the bigger question is... Liz Miller, president of Summit Place Financial Advisors, warned the Fed's bold moves could lead to a recession. I think it's very hard to fight inflation with interest rates and not bring down economic activity. Uh, by definition, you are raising rates because you are trying to slow spending. That is the definition of an economic slowdown. Whether we get a soft landing, a recession, or we are already in the start of a slowdown, as I believe, um, I, there's going to be economic consequences here. But for now, it's a risk the Fed seems willing to take, as inflation has become the nation's most pressing economic issue, with household sentiment worsening amid rising food and gasoline prices. The Fed also seemed to be responding to growing alarm on Wall Street that the Fed was falling behind in its battle with inflation. This week, stocks deepened their recent slide, confirming a new bear market in the S&P 500, though stocks closed higher Wednesday after the announcement. But the Fed's ability to control inflation could ultimately be limited as some challenges, such as supply chain issues, higher energy prices, and the war in Ukraine remain well out of its reach.
U.S. President Joe Biden demand oil refining companies explain why they are not putting more gasoline on the market, sharply escalating his rhetoric against the industry as he faces pressure over rising prices. U.S. President Joe Biden is ramping up the pressure on oil companies. On Wednesday, he demanded the industry explain why it isn't putting more gasoline on the market as prices rise for Americans across the country. Biden complained to executives from Marathon Petroleum, Valero Energy, ExxonMobil and others that they had cut back on oil refining to pad their profits, saying in part, quote, at a time of war, refinery profit margins well above normal being passed directly onto American families are not acceptable. Biden added that a lack of refining was driving gas prices up faster than oil prices, and that a lack of refining capacity was blunting actions by his administration to offset the impact of oil-rich Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Exxon made more money than God this year. On Friday, the president accused the U.S. oil industry, and ExxonMobil in particular, of capitalizing on a supply shortage to fatten profits. They're not drilling. Why aren't they drilling? Because they make more money not producing more oil. The price goes up, number one. And number two, the reason they're not drilling, is they're buying back their own stock, which should be taxed, quite frankly. U.S. energy companies are enjoying massive profits as the Russian invasion of Ukraine has added to a supply squeeze, which has driven crude oil prices above $100 a barrel. Meanwhile, Biden has been intensifying attacks against oil companies as gas pump prices race to record highs above $5 per gallon, and inflation surges to a 40-year record. Rising gas prices have helped to drive unexpectedly persistent consumer price inflation and voter anger before November 8th midterm elections, where Biden's Democratic Party is defending its control of Congress. It's going to a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more World News. Welcome back to World News Tonight. Now, Europe and Africa, along with India, are experiencing the consequences of global warming as they brace for exceptional early intense heat waves. The calendar may say that it's still spring, but it certainly doesn't feel like it for millions of people in Europe and North Africa. Morocco, Spain, parts of France, all dealing with a record-breaking early season heat wave. Temperatures above 35 or even 40 degrees Celsius are impacting millions, and for much of Western Europe, it is only the beginning. All-time record highs could be broken. The temperatures we are forecasting are very, very high for the middle of June. There is an air mass packed with sweltering heat over North Africa. And that explains why we're expecting temperatures that may break records in the next few days. There is a silver lining. This will not be a heat dome like the ones that unleashed days and weeks of brutal heat over India earlier this year and Canada last summer. Instead, meteorologists are calling it a heat plume, a swath of very hot air pushing north that will not sit over the same area for days and days. Still, though, in a not-so-distant past, these levels of heat were only seen in July and August. Scientists say this is yet another sign of our changing climate. In Spain, our traditionally hot summers are getting hotter and longer. Nowadays, the summer season lasts more than a month longer than in the 1980s. The heat wave also comes on the back of a very dry spring. Firefighters are on high alert and warning that wildfires could easily start and quickly spread. The World Health Organization is warning that there is a real risk that monkeypox will gain a foothold in Europe, urging governments to take action to curb the spread of the virus. The global agency's European director explained during a briefing that Europe is now at the epicenter of an escalating monkeypox outbreak. He said that 25 countries across Europe have reported over 1,500 cases so far. The WHO, however, said that the mass vaccination is not recommended or needed as of now. There isn't a specific vaccine for monkeypox, but the WHO says vaccines that were used to eradicate smallpox are up to 85% effective against monkeypox. The EU signed an agreement with Danish biotech company Bavarian Nordic for about 110,000 shots. 
Britain has procured more than 20,000 doses also from Bavaria Nordic Denmark, said it would receive 200 monkeypox vaccines from the Netherlands and was working on buying thousands more. Canada signed a $56 million contract with delivery starting next year along with the U.S. government saying it expects to receive 300,000 doses to be added in its current stockpile of about 72,000 doses. Bavarian Nordic said the U.S. had made an additional order for 500,000 doses, which altogether brings the country's total inventory to nearly 2 million. North Korea reported an outbreak of an unidentified intestinal epidemic in a farming region, putting further strain on the isolated country as it struggles to cope with chronic food shortages and a wave of COVID-19 infections. North Korea on Thursday announced a new infectious disease outbreak, even as the country battles to contain its first wave of COVID-19. Pyongyang has not identified the new infection, but South Korean officials and experts have said it could be cholera or typhoid spreading in the water supply. So far, no details on how many people have been infected. According to North Korean state media, leader Kim Jong-un has sent medicine to help those suffering from the, quote, acute enteric epidemic. Enteric meaning to do with the gastrointestinal system. The outbreak is spreading in a key agricultural region, and that has raised concerns it could make an already dire food shortage even worse. South Korea said it was monitoring the situation. According to one official, Seoul has signaled its willingness to help out in the case of any disease outbreak, including a proposal to send COVID-19 vaccines. But so far, Pyongyang has remained unresponsive. North Korea does not identify COVID-19 cases as such, apparently due to a lack of testing kits. Instead, it gives a daily figure for the number of fever patients. That figure was more than 26,000 on Thursday, bringing the total number of such cases to more than four and a half million. We have some good news for you. Stem cell technology in South Korea looks to greatly boost the reliability of clinical trials and to effectively reduce the need of animal testing. South Korean researchers have developed artificial tonsils which can be used to conduct more precise medicinal trials. Made using stem cell tissue from human tonsils, these artificial tonsils are biologically no different from the real thing. Because of this, the developers say using their product vastly improves the precision of the results of any clinical test compared to those done on animals. It reacts in a similar way to how our bodies would. It's meaningful as it's a model that can be used to test various treatments. Another local biotech company came up with a synthetic chip designed to emulate a human heart. It uses heart cells grown using human stem cells, and when looking under a microscope, the chip can be seen beating like a real heart. And when vein and nerve cells are added, developers explain that more sophisticated heart tests can be carried out. We plan to develop a multi-chip that connects the liver, heart, and other organs to build a platform that can replace animal and even clinical tests in the future. While much work is left to be done for these new technologies to be fully commercialized, they are evaluated as a way to reduce and even replace animal testing. Welcome back to World News Tonight and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Chilean swimmer Barbara Hernandez announced that she had received a Guinness World Record after swimming between the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans in southern Chile. A report published showed chronic air pollution cuts average global life expectancy by more than two years per person, an impact comparable to that of smoking and far worse than HIV, AIDS or terrorism. 17 migrants were rescued in a Mediterranean sea by a vessel of a Spanish NGO humanitarian maritime rescue after they jumped from a migrant boat to avoid being being captured by the Libyan Coast Guard. French President Emmanuel Macron, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi arrived in Kyiv on a joint trip to show their backing of Ukraine as it struggles to withstand a Russian assault. Toyota pushed back against critics who say it was being slow to embrace battery electric vehicles, arguing it needed to offer a variety of car choices to suit different markets and customers.
And that's all the news we got for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow for more news around the globe. In case you missed watch any of the stories we aired tonight, you can always rewatch on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. As we leave you tonight, we are leaving you with a look at a birthday celebration of many fuzzy friends. Stay safe and have a good night.